Hi guys, my name is Adam and I'm here with Love Crafts. We're going to be looking at top 10 embroidery stitches in this video and by the time you've finished you should have all the skills that you need to jump into your first embroidery project. For the first part of this video I'm going to be showing you how to stretch fabric onto an embroidery hoop and then we're going to jump straight into a running stitch. When stretching your fabric, you just want to undo the screw so you've got a nice bit of leeway. So you've got your fabric, you want to put the lower hoop under the fabric, you want it nice and central and you just want to stretch it over. This can be a little bit tricky just to initially get it going but you just want to slowly tighten the screw and add a little bit of tension to it and this just means that the fabric is nice and taut which is going to prevent any puckering when you're doing your embroidery stitches so you just want to move around the hoop gradually giving a gentle tug just to introduce some tension to the fabric and when you tap it it should feel taut like a drum so you've now got your hoop stretched ready to go with your embroidery so the first stitch that we're going to look at is a running stitch um, and for the purposes of this I'm going to get my air erasable pen and water erasable so it's quite useful for both I'm just going to introduce a nice line like that and all that is going to do is just give me a point to follow so it's going to be a nice straight running stitch right so we're going to take our thread I've pre-wound this um, stranded cotton to six stranded cotton onto a nice reel um, from a skein all this does is it prevents you getting any knots and it keeps everything nice and tidy and it's quick and easy for you to just snip your length of stranded cotton um, for the purposes of this, I'm actually going to split the cotton. I'm going to separate two of the six off, so we've got a nice group of four strands of cotton. Okay, so now we've got our four strands of the stranded cotton, and I've got an embroidery needle. If you've got good four strands of cotton and a nice embroidery needle, that will make threading it straight nice and easy. Okay, so we've got our thread. On the needle. A very common debate among the embroidery community is to knot or not to knot. Um, when you're working with embroidery it's really up to you what you actually want to do um, with the thread. If you want to tie a knot I would just loop round your finger once like that and just pull it through. The only thing with a knot is that you need to make sure it will anchor the thread in the fabric and not pull through. This working with four strands, it's quite a substantial thickness of thread, so one knot should be enough. Now we've got our needle threaded and we have tied a small knot in the end just to anchor the thread. We're going to begin with the running stitch. What we want to do is come up at the beginning. Now if you're a little unsure about where you need to actually come up through the bottom of the fabric, just hold the needle against your finger with a little length of the needle and then you can gently just test where it's coming up until you know that it's in the right position. Um, don't be afraid to shift and move around a little bit until you know that you're in the right place. You'll get the hang of it and it gets much easier with time. Okay, so we just want to come up in the fabric. Um, for the first part of the running stitch, you want to measure roughly where you want it to be. This varies depending on the pattern, but you just want to give a nice length for the stitch and then just gently pull taut. And then when you come back up, you want to leave again a small gap between the first stitch and the beginning of the second. Now, as you're doing this, don't need to worry about pulling too hard on the thread you just want to give a gentle tug just enough to make sure that the stitches are lying flat if you pull it too hard you can pucker the fabric so you don't want to do that so again we're coming up we're giving a nice gap we're working out where we want the next stitch and we're going back down again 
Now a good running stitch is one of the basics for hand embroidery. You'll quite often see it in patterns if you've purchased one um, in a pattern book or online. And it's a good basic to have your head wrapped around and keep going along until we get to the very end. Okay, so for a running stitch that's taken you all the way to the end along the line, you've left nice gaps between your stitches. If you want it to be super precise, you could actually draw other lines, but um, to ensure that every gap is perfectly even. Um, but as an embroidery beginner, this will be perfect to get you going with getting to grips with this stitch. Okay, next we're going to be moving on to a back stitch. Um, the principle is very similar to the running stitch, but there's just a slight difference. So we will go through that next. So what I'm going to do, just like I did for the running stitch, just draw a relatively straight line with my air erasable pen. So I have a nice line to trace along. So my thread is already attached and I'm going to come up where I have my line and just pull until it is nice and taut. Then I want to go down just like we did with the running stitch. Now here is where the difference is. With a back stitch we want to come up a little further away from your first stitch so you've got an, almost the same gap as the length of the first stitch and then we want to come up and then we go back. So you want to put your needle down through the hole that the first stitch went down. So almost in exactly the same place. So the key difference with this stitch is that there is no gap. Um, it's one of the most common stitches for outlining on embroidery patterns. So again, we we'll come up and we go back down at the end of the last stitch. And it gives you a nice straight, smooth line that is a solid line. I'm going to keep going all the way along this line so we're coming up a good distance away from the first the previous stitch and going back down there. Now this can be a very useful stitch um, with very varied thicknesses of thread. So you can get very smooth lines using a back stitch and you can vary the length of the stitches an awful lot as well. So it makes them a very versatile one to use in a variety of different patterns. Okay, there we go. And that is a back stitch. And you can see the key difference is it gives you a much smoother line and the running stitch has nice gaps in between each stitch. So a back stitch is very effective for outlining on embroidery patterns. For the next stitch that we're going to be looking at, we are going to be doing a split stitch. Um, for this, I've threaded six strands of the stranded cotton. So it's a full length of thread. I haven't split any of the threads off. Um, the reason I've done this is because the thicker the thread, the easier a split stitch is to do. It's not a rule, but it's a guide. It makes it easier for you to come back up as we work along. Okay, so I've threaded my needle and again, like with the previous stitches, I'm just gonna draw a nice line with my air erasable pen so that we've got a guide to follow. And we're gonna come up in the fabric. And we want to come down like we have with the previous two stitches. And just want to pull it so it's lying nice and flat. And the key difference with a split stitch, what you want to do is very carefully put the needle through the stitch that you have just worked. So you're going backwards and you're trying to come up exactly through the thread. And that is the key difference with a split stitch. And you want to pull your thread and then just go back down again. 
So what you are doing with the needle is splitting the thread um, that you've previously laid down. So again, we're coming up through the previous stitch and giving it a little tug and then going back down again. And the key difference between this stitch and a back stitch is you don't really see the actual stitches at the end once you've done them. You can't really see where one stitch begins and the other ends, which again can make it a very useful stitch for outlining. It can give you a very smooth line. So we'll just work our way along. Splitting the stitch with the needle. This is why it's particularly useful to use thicker amounts of thread. Um, if you're using only one or two strands, it can make this stitch very tricky to do. And then as you get towards the end, with the split stitch, um, it can be useful to just leave, when you do your last stitch, do it a little bit shorter than your previous stitches and it anchors it and makes it less noticeable that you haven't actually split the last stitch. Okay, and that is a split stitch. So the next stitch that we're going to be looking at is a chain stitch. This is a very useful and very heavily used stitch in embroidery. It's so versatile with the ways that you can actually use it and it's one of my personal favorites. We're going to take our air erasable pen and do a, another line following on from our previous stitching. Now to do a chain stitch, we've got our needle already threaded. We want to come up our fabric and do a small stitch at the beginning. You want just enough to be an anchor. Then we want to come up a little like we did with the back stitch where you've left a gap between the first stitch and where your needle has come up. And the key difference with the chain stitch, you're working all on the front. So you want to put your needle underneath your little anchor stitch that you did at the beginning. And you want to gently just take it under that stitch. And then once you've got your nice loop through the first anchor stitch, you want to go back down where you came up. And that is the first part of your chain. So now, again, we want to give a little gap between the first stitch and your needle. Pull it through and then resting the needle just on the fabric, you want to insert the needle underneath the stitching. If you're struggling with that, it can sometimes help to rest a finger underneath the stitching, stitching just to raise it up a little bit. And then bring it under again, a little bit of tension, but not too much. And then back down where you came up. And the great thing with a chain stitch is all of your thread is on the surface of the fabric, which makes it a very useful thread for decorative embroidery back under. You can go in either direction underneath the loop. So it's whichever is more comfortable for you, whether you're right or left-handed. And back down again. The more loops on your chain, the neater it looks as each one evens out when you pull it, evens the tension out when you pull it through. And then finally back down again. And that is a chain stitch. For the next stitch, we're going to be looking at doing a stem stitch. Um, I have three strands of my stranded cotton on my needle with a knot in the back. Um, and I've just drawn, using my air erasable pen, a nice straight line for us to follow. I want to come up at the beginning of my line and with a stem stitch, the 
best way to do it is to rest your thumb just like that, holding some of the thread to the top away from your work area. And then you want to measure away how long do you want your stitch to be and pull the thread back down. Now the key difference is you want to hold this loop on the surface just with your thumb and then bring your needle up in between those two stitches. And then as that comes, you can release your thread and pull this in the direction of the line that you are following. Okay, so then that stitch is complete. So again, in preparation for the next stitch, just hold the thread using your thumb out of your work area. And we want to go back down again and just pull until you have a nice loop on the surface and you want to come up immediately next to the end of that first stitch. So you don't want to leave a gap between those stitches. And again, just gently pull, release your loop and tug it in that direction. And then we're ready for the next stitch. You want to continue working like this to do your stem stitch. Okay, release and just pull in that direction. And what this stitch will give is a nice solid line without any breaks in the stitching on the surface. So you're holding it to the side, pulling it up, releasing, and then just gently tugging in the direction that you're working. And just as we get towards the end of this line, what you want to do is pull it completely flat like that. So you're not holding any excess thread on the surface of the fabric and just do one last small stitch at the end to anchor your thread. And there we go. That is a stem stitch. Okay, and for the next stitch we're going to be looking at, we will be doing a lazy daisy stitch. Um, I have three strands of my stranded cotton readily threaded on my needle and I have used my erasable pen just to put three lines as a guide for myself as to where the stitches are going to sit. Okay, so we will put the needle up at the top of my line and do one small stitch. And this stitch, similarly to the chain stitch, is your anchor. So you have your anchor stitch there, and you can bring your needle up at the bottom of the line and you want to thread it underneath exactly the same way we did for a chain stitch. And you want a little bit of tension, but not too much. And then you put your needle back down where you came up, like that. And this stitch, I will do another one here. to come up and go back down so that you've got your anchor and then a good distance away from your anchor you come back up again and then put your needle underneath the anchor in a loop like that and then we want to go back down again and to continue working in a lazy daisy in a circle will give you a very pretty flower shape. It has a very similar composition to the chain stitch and they can both be used in similar ways. Um, and the, good, the key thing with a good lazy daisy stitch is to not pull too tight so that you're giving a nice loop of thread and it doesn't get pulled too taut. Okay, and that is a lazy daisy stitch. Okay, so the next stitch we're going to be looking at is a fly stitch. I have my needle threaded with three strands of the stranded cotton. And we're going to take my air erasable pen. And just like I did for the lazy daisy, I'm going to put three small lines just as a guide for myself. Okay, so I have my three lines as a guide for my fly stitch. And I want to take the needle to the left of the line where the stitch is going to sit 
want to bring it up and if we just take a thumb and just gently hold the thread to the bottom we want to then go down on the right hand side of the line like that and you're holding your thread just loosely like that and then you come up almost in a triangular shape between the three points and as you pull it gently let it just come to sit in a V shape you want to then go down just underneath to anchor your thread and it gives you a nice V shape and a fly stitch can be very useful for foliage on patterns especially um, again we've come up to the left we just hold the thread to the side and go back down on the right hand side and in a triangular shape just come up underneath the stitch as you gently pull release that and let it come to sit in a nice V and then our anchor just goes to the bottom so you don't want to pull too tight again with these stitches but they'll sit nice and flat which you've moved on to the next bit so we're holding our thread to the bottom going back down and coming up in a triangular shape now your anchor stitch can be as large or as short as you would like it to be it varies on fly stitch it makes no difference to the finish of the stitch but it can give different shapes so you would sometimes be able to use I'll do another fly stitch so again we're coming down going back in the right hand side and we're going to come up just in the middle of the previous one to give it another nice neat line and pull just gently like that and this stitch can be used for trees and foliage on plants and the more that you build up and layer them the more effective they can be but we have three fly stitches Okay, for the next stitch we're going to be looking at, we will be doing a French knot. Um, I have my needle threaded with three strands of the stranded cotton. I'm going to take my air erasable pen and this time I'm just going to do three dots. Well, I might just do a few more. Just have a little row of dots as a guide for us to follow. And my thread is anchored. And we want to come up through the first knot and you may need to release your hoop to do your first French knot so you can rest it on a table or on a surface that you're working on you want to gently take the thread that you have in your left or right hand depending on which way that you work and you want to wrap the thread twice around your needle so you have two little loops going over the surface of the needle just like that then gently holding the tension you want to position your needle so it's going back down in the hole where you came up and you'll see that if you gently tug on the thread it should pull all of the tension in the thread nice and taut and you can then gently pull your needle through you may need to give it a little tug depending on how many strands of thread you're using and it will anchor them into a nice French knot. And we'll do that again. So we come up, just rest your hoop down. You take your thread and it is once, twice. You can add additional loops if you want the knot to be bigger, but a traditional French knot is just two loops around the thread. So we've pulled the thread taut around the needle and we're going back down and give it a little tug just to anchor the knot in place. Coming back up, resting down, 
once, twice, and back down where you came up, just giving a little tug to the thread. So we have a row of French knots and the last two with just those extra rotations around the needle just to give a slightly bigger knot. So there you have a French knot. Okay, so now we're going to be doing a satin stitch. I have my stranded cotton and I have three strands on here. Again, you could do six if you wanted a much thicker satin stitch, but for this purpose, we're going to go with three. So I have a nice knot. I'm going to take my air erasable pen and for this stitch I'm gonna draw a little square and the reason we're doing this is when you're working in a satin stitch it's very useful for filling in large areas in the thread. So what we'll do is come up the bottom corner of the square and we just want to go straight the way all the way across and you want the thread to lie nice and flat. And to optimize on your thread, because you want as much on the surface and not at the back, you want to leave a little gap between the first stitch and the second, and then go straight across to the other side. And then you want to come back on yourself so that you're filling in all of the gaps. And working this way, all of your thread is on the surface of the embroidery because this is a very costly stitch to do for your thread stocks so you want to try and get as much of it on the surface as you can and only have little anchors on the back so again we're coming back on yourself to fill in the gap that you just left and get your stitch to lie nice and flat across the surface of the fabric and this is a very straightforward stitch to do, but the more even you can get the satin stitch to lie, the smoother the effect is going to be for the filling in. Like I said, it's a very useful stitch if you have a large surface area that you want to fill in with thread. And it's quite a fast method for filling in a large area as well. Okay, so there we have a satin stitch. It will lie nice and flat and smooth and it's a great way to fill in large surfaces of the fabric if you have um, a big surface area to fill in and it's a very effective way to get a nice injection of colour. Okay, and for our final stitch we're going to be looking at a long and short. It's a, another very effective stitch for filling in a large area, much like the satin stitch that we just looked at. So I'm going to take my thread, which is three strands of stranded cotton. I'm already on my needle and we have the satin stitch square that I previously did. And we have another nice marked out square with the air erasable pen. So we're going to come up in the corner and then we want to go down. For your first stitch it can be quite long in the gap and then so that is your long of the long and short and then for the short you want to come up about halfway along the previous stitch and pull taut and go back down there. So we have one long and one short and then you want to just alternate those stitches all the way along and this stitch is very effective for filling in because it gives you a very neat very even fill all the way across the surface area is quite a labour intensive stitch and it does take quite a long time to do but when you get it right it's very very satisfying to see them all lined up. So the trick with long and short is you now have nice gaps in between the long stitches so if we wanted to continue along we could come up 
double the distance of the short stitch and then come up and we want to go in between the two long stitches to meet that short one and then that fills in the gap. And then again, we do a short stitch next to the long. So you're alternating between the two and it fills in all of the gaps. And you can continue along until you fill the whole block. The key thing with that stitch is alternating between the short and the long to fill in the gaps as you work along like a break. And that is a long and short stitch. And that is all 10 basic embroidery stitches that you may, will need to start on your new embroidery projects, whether it's a adventurous design of your own or following a pattern. And thanks very much for watching and happy stitching.